for some reason. Just Hello. Okay. I get. No, it's visible. Okay. I think. Go. Hello, everyone. Today is uh, May twenty fifth. Uh, 2022, we are, uh, like always, in Natural Pigments uh, studio, and uh, my name is Tatiana Zaitseva. I am assisted by George O'Hanlon, like, O'Hanlon, like always. And uh, so we, today is the third series, uh, third program of series of the glazing. And uh, so we will uh, start today from uh, last um group of the our glazing mediums if you didn't see previous two it probably will be very interesting because i will summarize today every uh all three of them and um uh on the end we will talk about uh, our earth colors and so uh, what you probably were most interested today and um so I want to remind you, so I forgot last session uh, to tell you, so then we do have a special promotion and uh, the special promotion, it's uh, you buy any three different mediums and get 20% uh, off. It's not very often. So I just remind you that will be until May 2031st. And um, so um, let's start. So we will talk about, uh, so we are showing you our uh, gel mediums and uh, this would, we will start from uh, oleo gel and uh, all of them will be transparent. You probably should take me out. So that would be good. So then next one would be oleo res gel. And uh, so epoxide gel. And you can see how sticky that one. We will cover all uh, all behavior of every each of them. So next on the row will be walnut oil gel. And the last it's uh, Wilson's medium. Wilson's medium, uh, one of the actually historical. Uh, it's a little bit modified uh, formula, but uh, it's one of the historical mediums. It's actually based on Richard Wilson and his use of bodied oil in uh, 18th century. You can see all of them quite transparent. And uh, we will a little bit talk about from uh, previous program, it's Italian varnish. And again, I, we just wanted you to see how it was, uh, how it's looked different compared to other gel mediums. And of course, Venetian medium. I want to remind you Italian varnish and Venetian medium made uh, with black oil. So, and Venetian medium has a glass, uh, grounded glass. So, um, Again, like uh, uh, we talk about, so then we will uh, cover all uh, five mediums today. Five, yes. So, mm -hmm. um, and so, and uh, we will continue the same passage what we did uh, on previous program. So we were, uh, we will compare Mars red, which is synthetic colors, color and uh, very uh, small particles and um, uh, very powerful pigment. And you can see from the tube, it will, it, looks very sticky, uh, very stringy. stringy. And um, so almost impossible to work with right from the tube. Um, of course, if uh, unless you just work with uh, maybe palette uh, knife. So and that's how oleo res gel looks like oleo res gel based on alkyd medium. So this is quite different from uh, oleo gel, although it's look uh, almost identical, but you see the behavior quite sticky. And um, so um, 
the purpose of that one was uh, uh, to speed up the drying time. Unfortunately, that um, medium has um, uh, dry, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, solvent. Odorless mm. mineral spirits. Yes. Yeah. So whether that's unfortunate or not, it just depends if you have um, solvent. Yes, unfortunately, yeah. if you yeah, if you have uh, trouble with that, so that will be not your medium. And so here we compare uh, the same oleoresin gel with uh, Venetian red, where we uh, have opposite. We have big particles. It's natural color, and uh, obviously natural naturally it has other um, other minerals inside and so uh, it's again it's uh, iron oxide same like um, mars red but natural and so therefore it's quite um, transparent compared to to mars and um, you easy can work from from the tube and we will show you how it's look like because tomorrow we will cover specifically even that color um, uh, venetian red in our uh, series of the um, natural colors, earth colors. Here is the epoxide oil gel. So because uh, that that gel was based on um, on oil gel, but for people who want to kind of speed up the drying time, but uh, without any solvent. So then um, uh, epoxide gel doesn't have any solvent. Any solvents, or, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's solvent free. So epoxide oil is a copolymerized oil, which means it's just a linseed oil that's been cooked with a, a monomer and it alters its, some of its physical properties. Uh, it dries a little bit faster without using any kind of dryers. And you can see the uh, even behavior of the uh, epoxide gel is very sticky and toughy. Like um, it's almost feels like it's a, a candy. You play with candy. So therefore, again, you need to be careful with this one because uh, you will or absolutely love it or absolutely hate that uh, once uh, because the how that you, your brush will behave. So it will be very tacky from the beginning and uh, since it's epoxide oil and epoxide oil dries uh, quite f I mean faster than oil uh, the, the oil simple yeah. yeah simple linseed oil, oil linseed oil so that will dry um, settle much faster and so again I'm showing specifically this uh, behavior so then you will understand when you will buy uh, then it's normal it's nothing wrong with that that uh, particular uh, product. It's just how it's intended to be. Yeah, some of the advantages of that kind of behavior is it gives you a little more drag on the brush. Yes. And it also creates or allows you to make longer brush strokes, longer lines, because you can see it, it'll pull a long distance. It won't snap off like yes. a short, like a oleo gel, which is much shorter. Yes. So that's why we have these differences. Walnut oil gel, George made specifically for people for whom oleo gel was drying too fast. So we have artists who um, paint a little bit, uh, they have longer sessions. And so then he, uh, he just was pushed to do that one. It's not like we love to do the mediums here. So one after another, it just needed for a certain uh, group of artists. And if, if you paint with walnut oil, so that means you, one of the artists who like the more time to spend uh, on the um, uh, painting. So walnut oil gel will be your gel. Again, it's no, uh, there are no solvent in this one. And uh, you can see how it's loosening up very easy, uh, the Mars red. Here's the same walnut oil with um, uh, Venetian red. And uh, uh, on the end of the session, we will talk about um, how they look different on the end, because although they feel the same like gels, but once you paint with them, uh, we will talk about glass, how um, dry time, uh, we will have uh, even um, the table for you. So then it will be easy for you to identify. 
So again, you see uh, Walnut Oil makes actually paint uh, uh, slightly uh, sh shortened battery, not like uh, epoxide gel or uh, oleo res gel. Wilson's medium, completely different from all of them uh, before. So, I mean, it's still gel, but uh, it's, um, it's not as transparent and um, it will definitely dry, uh, Wilson's medium will dry your paint uh, the most, the fastest one. And again, it does have a solvent. So if you have trouble with solvent, that's not medium for you. Originally, George was making this one specific, and we were talking about plein air artists. And so um, it was because of the uh, turpentine. But what happened uh, later, our, uh, the uh, teachers like that uh, medium very much because uh, during the, even the, uh, the, um, Classes. With the classes, yes, thank you. <laughs> Demos, it settles so fast, so it's uh, it's uh, it helps to uh, to go to next session very easy. Yeah, and again, this is this is a medium based on Richard Wilson's use of bodied oil turpentine in uh, the 18th century. Richard Wilson was a a well known landscape, British landscape artist during that time. And he recorded the use of a similar type medium. We based it on that uh, in his notes, but uh, we've imp made some improvements. One of it being a gel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we are modern people. <clears throat> we can do this. <laughs> so again, uh, Wilson's medium will make uh, slightly buttery uh, paint. Yeah, it will shorten. So. Um, so now we will show you the swatches again, same like in previous two, uh, two programs, uh, we will talk about glazes. And so in this case, we will compare only two meal, uh, drawdowns, uh, just for, um, Mars red and for Venetian. And you can see, so on the left side, you will see Venetian and on the right side, Mars red. And, uh, it's again, I'm reminded it's Vizolio res gel and you can see then how uh, uh, Venetian red is uh, much more transparent. In other words, so, they're, we've mixed them in the same ratios, yes. the Mars red with the oleo res gel and the Venetian yes. red with the oleo. And then we applied exactly the same uh, depth of film, which is in this case, two thousandths of an inch, which is, um, it's actually about the width of human hair. So if you can imagine that, and then you can see how much more transparent Venetian red is. A little bit later, I will show you the glass of that, um, uh, that swatches too. So it doesn't really make sense to use an opaque pigment like Mars red, which is very opaque, very strong tinting in a glaze, just no. because you're gonna overwork it. You're gonna use excessive amount of uh, medium to try to achieve that. So here's a uh, uh, next swatch will be about uh, epoxide oil gel. And again, on the uh, left side, we will have Venetian red and you, you still, you, again, same ratio. And uh, you can see what the big difference between Venetian red and Mars red. Walnut oil gel. And uh, remember I said then uh, it makes a uh, very uh, stiff and buttery. So that's what happened uh, with Walnut Gel. I could not even spread as, um, as much on, um, uh, on the swatch. So you can see it's breaking up um, the, the uh, paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's quite buttery, quite making, uh, I can't say stiffer, obviously not because it's, um, it's gel-like but it's not as uh, smooth like what uh, uh, you can see on Mars red. Yeah. And the, the ratio here uh, It's uh, almost like 50-50. So yeah. in, these, again, in these particular slides. Yeah. Yes, and uh, again, we <clears throat> don't recommend to, do, to add that much. It was just specifically just for the show. 
But again, if you will return back to our previous and um, uh, we were talking about one to four and four to one ratio. And I can tell you right now, so then uh, one to four ratio with uh, oleo gel uh, still not dried. So please, please don't use that. And um, so I will, uh, but we will cover um, the previous um, uh, swatches too. Yeah, I, the, I have the more everything. the more medium yes. you add, the slower everything yes. is. So we have yes. to be cautious about that. Yes. And here's Wilson's. Here's medium. Wilson's medium. And again, the same <clears throat> uh, same story. So you can see then Wilson's medium um, uh, was still quite buttery, and uh, that's breaking up. And part of that has to do with the particle size yes. of the pigment. Yes. Because you can see in the Mars Red, it's which is very small. It's uh, sub-micron particles, and so uh, it, it makes a smoother film. Yes. So here's the graph we told you. So uh, if you will take the drying time, drying time taking the one as the longest, and the six as the um, uh, as the fastest, although we have seven <clears throat> mediums here, but um, uh, we thought we absolutely know that Italian varnish and oleo resin gel drying uh, quite uh, similar. So they uh, they somewhere in the middle. So walnut oil gel will dry the longest. Oleo gel will be the next one and epoxide uh, oil gel right after. So Italian varnish and oleo res gel, although, um, so both of them have, uh, have solvent and Italian varnish uh, uh, based on black oil. And, and again, I repeat that. Uh, so uh, please be careful because this is again, a quite dark medium and uh, don't use this with um, uh, bright um, white colors or, or white colors. And uh, so oleo res gel based on alkit. So again, if you have any concerns about that, so then it's not your medium. So Venetian medium is the next one. It dries quite fast. And so, and, um, and Wilson's medium, just because of the formulation and uh, turpentine uh, in this one specifically. So it does, does dry the <coughs> fastest one. So when we talk about glass, that's different story. So epoxide oil is the bodied oil. And if you were to, uh, if you were watching our previous programs, and so we, uh, we talk specifically about the bodied oil are giving the, uh, not only, you know, different behavior or the, of the paint, which is making them longer and, um, stringy, but it's, uh, it's, uh, changing the glass too because it uh, it will make uh, your painting uh, paint uh, quite glossy. So epoxide oil is number one, and it will be very visible when I will show you swatches a little bit later. So next one is Italian varnish. Almost surprised to see, but so and um, so oleo res gel and oleo gel. And I guess wal walnut oil we can put on the, the same uh, for, the, um, for the glass. And uh, so next after that is standing Venetian medium. Although we always talk about a jewel-like um, finish if you are using that, that medium. So it's still, nevertheless, it does have a glass there. And, um, and although glass, refractive index of glass is one, uh, 0.52 where it's very close to oil but the particles what uh, of this glass we put in quite large so uh, the it's changing the uh, the surface overall of the painting and so therefore it will be that unevenness and so then you will see 
Uh, it develops a little texture. Yes. Which, again, could which, be good yeah, because... Uh, we uh, noticed uh, uh, this last uh, couple months, because we work on that program, and people writing us emails about how they use Venetian medium and how they love it or what what necessarily they don't like about so then all these pluses and minuses actually uh, sometimes we love the minuses because for some artists minus it's uh, for another one is completely plus so we we hear all of that and uh, uh, you probably heard me before saying that venetian medium doesn't make any sense to use uh, you know on first layers of the uh, painting because of the glass because of the you know it's more expensive uh, um, medium than let's say like oleo gel or impasta so uh but the tooth what gives uh, uh artists are you know the most valuable uh, sense on that uh, that medium and so and the last one will be wilson's medium and it's uh when it's dry it's completely uh, matte so even uh, i will show you even um Mars red, but uh, uh, in most cases, it's uh, very glossy. In this case, even with, with Wilson's medium, even uh, that, that color become a, a very matte looking. So um, today we will talk about um, earth colors because we, when we kind of sense then not many artists understand then how <clears throat> harmonious uh, these colors are. And so using the uh, high strengths of the, the synthetic modern pigments, sometimes uh, go, uh, working against you. And uh, we already explained to you so then particle size <clears throat> and um, and the overall, uh, if you would think of the physics of that uh, paint, so then uh, paint with smaller particles using more, much more oil. So therefore, the, the colors with smaller particles will look always uh, much more glossy than the, the paint with, um, uh, with bigger particles and uh, were therefore used uh, uh, much smaller um, much less oil. So we will talk today about, you see the, the very top is, it's our blue rich yellow ochre. And if you will see from right, so where that's, it's hundred percent of the color from the tube, no mediums at all. And then we will follow to the, uh, to the uh, left. And uh, what we did, we just increased the Transparency increased by I was editing oleo gel, and um, so in the the first it was like five percent, then then another five percent, then ten percent, and so and then all the way to the uh, almost no color, <laughs> and uh, so on the very right uh, column you can see uh, it's just simple wash with rublisol uh, just to see the the. Tone, yes, and um, yeah, it's, tonality uh, of the color. Yeah, so it's 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 a stain almost. Yes. what some people would call a stain on yes. the canvas. So there's very little oil there, and and most of it was washed out with uh, with the odorless mineral spirits. Yes. What's what what may not be visible in this uh, in in, in this uh, streaming video is uh, that the colors vary in temperature. So the Venetian red is actually fairly cool, which is very interesting for a red ochre. The yellow ochre is is pretty warm, yes. and the burnt sienna definitely warm. Uh, the uh, raw umber is is fairly warm uh, in this particular case, yeah, because there are different raw umbers, and the castle earth tends to be cool. neutral yeah. to cool. Yes, yeah, depending. Oh. Yes, again, it depends with, with how you use it, yeah. but uh, quite neutral, you're right, yeah. and so then. But the, what's interesting is the effect here of uh, the glazing as opposed to mixing with white with earth colors. And that's what we're trying to show in this particular slide. And we're going to show you what these colors look like with whites. Should we go to the next? Yes, next slide. So. 
uh, here I need to explain a little bit. So then on the very middle, you can see where the 100%, so then uh, number 100, it's basically again the same um, same 100% from the tube, nothing added it. And so, uh, and again, we are following blue rich yellow ochre, Venetian red, French burnt sienna, French raw amber, and castle earth. So if we are going towards right, we are mixing with titanium white, where the towards left with uh, lead white. And uh, so the ratio is going like this. And so if, well, let's let's take a lead white, for example. So the next uh, from 100, it's 80% uh, of the yellow ochre and 20% of the lead white. So the next one, 50-50, and uh, the uh, last one is 20% of yellow ochre and 80% uh, of lead white. Now, compare to the right side, and you can see how uh, 2082 titanium uh, is uh, uh, different, and uh, especially visible on 8020 from both sides. You see how lead white, 20% uh, of lead white didn't uh, do much damage to, to uh, yellow ochre. So where the um, titanium already uh, changed the color quite a bit. So if you uh, follow the next one, Venetian red, and uh, you still can see then uh, as much as we are saying then Venetian red is uh, quite transparent, Look, it's um, uh, it's showing uh, very, you know, easy here. So then, on titanium and um, and lead white, you see how on titanium it's becoming quite cool, almost pink color. Not almost; it's absolutely pink. Where the on Venetian red with lead white, it's uh, it's salmon like salmon um, orangey. Um, still maintains still, a little still, bit of warmth. Yes. But yes. um, but but it's yeah. it's definitely cooler. It's different cooler. So that, as opposed to other red ochres that we yes. have also. So <clears throat> now uh, look the French uh, burnt sienna and French burnt sienna has big particles. Same. So actually, if you know our line of the colors, you know then all our French colors are quite transparent. They have probably the biggest particles uh, from entire line of the earth colors. And so therefore you can see how they're tinting very easy and you will see so like specifically with titanium white, mm -hmm. you can see how uh, the, the color is uh, uh, tinting very, very fast. So and again, great example. You see how uh, on both sides uh, it makes very cool on um, uh, cool swatches on right side and uh, much warmer on the left side with uh, with lead white. I one, think the, one thing uh, to note too yes. is the if you look at the 80 20 mixtures on either side of the hundred percent, you'll notice the difference in terms of opacity of titanium yes. compared to lead white. Yes. And you can see the colors are losing their strength going towards the right on the left side, not as quickly, Indeed, even yeah. with the same amount. So that's a really important thing to understand about. Not only is titanium white cooler than lead white, but it's also much more powerful. Yeah. So and then um, actually, the, for me, it was most interesting color what uh, not many artists pay attention, but it's Castle Earth. It's uh, among our black colors, although it's kind of like brown, uh, brown earth. And uh, so interesting <clears throat> when um, when you paint uh, from the tube, I always start then actually it's uh, quite warm. Uh, but now when you see that uh, the you know, the range, how, what you can do with this color, with uh, titanium, it's uh, it become quite cool, where on the left side, it's still staying neutral. So it's uh, it's unbelievable. <clears throat> it's I uh, it's it was discovery for me. Keep in mind also that with whites, it still cools colors quite a bit more than yes. in glazes. So yes. if, we, if we just flip back, yes, you can see how much warmer all of these colors are. So glazing tends to warm the, uh, so because we're painting on the same white, 
so you can see it tends to warm up uh, colors. So when you when you want to warm colors, the glazes is the is the right approach, of course, because you're altering the underlying color. And then with whites, it's full on opacity, but uh, uh, but it's always going to cool down the color. So you can always modulate colors. Very uh, interesting between glazing and, and use of different whites. Yes. So, so we uh, we can uh, uh, basically now entertain the the um, questions if we have any questions, and uh, while we are looking for questions, I'm not sure if uh, if there is. There Here's are one okay. from uh, Constance. Because epoxide oil is glossy, will oil paint adhere well to it if the epoxide oil is used in underlayers? Uh, yes, and uh, so interesting. So uh, uh, thank you, Constance. And so uh, we didn't hear any uh, problems. On the, and I understand why, why you're talking about this, because in, in class we are saying that the glossier the surface, it's more difficult to adhere. Um, I, I can show you right now if George will um, switch to. So this, this is uh, epoxide oil gel. And you can see, so again, this is, I'm taking two meals and I will compare today specifically for Mars red and so and for, um, uh, for uh, Venetian red. And you can see the difference. So then you can see the glass on Mars red where although like in here in Venetian, but you see like here's oleo gel. And uh, if I will compare oleo gel with uh, Epoxide, here's epoxide, here's oleo gel. And uh, the glass is there, but not as much where you can see, for example, here. And uh, I specifically show this, you can see on lights, if you can see this lines from the light, so that means it's very glossy. Where oleo gel, where here, okay, I'm trying, okay, here. So it's uh, quite different. So we are talking about glass but again it's glass compared to to the, each the, other the key, yeah that's the key thing so most of the gloss is mitigated by the actual pigment as you can see by comparison the uh, comparison the uh, mars red with the venetian red huge difference in gloss yes also this is, uh, these particular swatches are 50-50, which really we don't recommend. Absolutely, yes. So, yes. Uh, so obviously the more medium you add, the glossier the paint. So, so you'll, you'll, you won't achieve high gloss it's like definitely that will not be, in, yes. in, in practice. We're showing this just to compare overall, but in practice, you won't have that kind of glossiness, and so you you shouldn't have issues with uh, adhesion, uh, you know, due to uh, any any kind of gloss that it does yeah. build up, because it will typically be more matte, like what you see on the right side there. Exactly. So I want you. Uh, I want like now since epoxide in this case is such a you know big show up so uh, i will compare with that every each of uh, these mediums what we talk about here is oleo res gel and you can see uh, and again i'm taking mars red because that was very visible and so again here's walnut gel where's the uh, very matte looking and uh, uh, look that one i will that's the the one the most and that you can see this is uh, uh, the wilson's medium absolutely different surface okay and also keep so, in mind uh, constance is that the cards that we're putting this on are sealed they have a varnish so it prevents the oil turn one of the cards over yeah so you don't see any oil coming through to the back no. of the card so the card is essentially non-absorbent it's going to be pretty rare that you're going to be painting on non-absorbent surfaces so a lot of that oil will be pulled down into the underlying layers, such as the ground. So a lot of that, what we're showing would not necessarily apply, but we're showing this to uh, have a comparison of what each medium does 
by you know making an apples to apples comparison there. And here I'm showing you again best based on uh, epoxide oil. So here's Venetian medium, and here I'm sorry, this Venetian medium, and that is our Italian <clears throat> varnish. And again, you see that that glass little bit more an Italian varnish than uh, than in Venetian medium. So I can do this exactly the same uh, comparison with, um, let's say with, uh, so where's that? Um, Oleo res gel. Va so that's not. Looks like there. solitaire. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I just want to, to see where my, so that's Venetian. Where's the my epoxide oil and uh, and the Mars red? I just was showing that and I can't. Oh, so this is Italian. Oh, here's epoxide. Okay, let's let's do correct epoxide. So here's olive res gel. And again, uh, although that's supposed to be the most uh, the glossy one, and you can see the difference uh, actually with the um, Earth colors, you see again bigger particles. So here's uh, Italian varnish, and here's olio gel. Not uh, uh, it's uh, it's not glossy at all, and uh, here's walnut oil, and uh, so. Again, most of the gloss is controlled by the paint you mix it with, not the not the medium, unless you yes. add way too much medium. And here's again our Wilson's medium. Yeah. So this is, uh, so this, uh, okay. I hope we covered that because uh, we needed to compare uh, specifically uh, with Venetian medium and uh, with, uh, um, with Italian varnish, what we were touching. And I wanted you to show you uh, everything on, um, um, from previous program and um, uh, today, how they look different. So. If we have, do you have any questions yes, about? There is. Yes, okay, great. So, uh, Melissa asked about uh, Castle Earth, uh -huh. about its light fastness. Absolutely. Yep. This is Earth's color, and it's, uh, it was million years in, uh, in Earth under the. <laughs> so, and it will definitely stay another million years. So, it's, uh, it's Earth's colors, it's uh, uh, the. The, the, Big, bigger particles, so then less oils used, and so very, uh, very light fast. Yeah. So we we obtain it from uh, from Europe, and it is, as Tanya mentioned, an earth color, um, and it's primarily a kind of brown ochre. Yes. So um, so it's it's not a pure black, but it has uh, out of the tube it looks black, and you can see how. Yes. How uh, on the very I, far right yes, side there? Yes. It's and it's it's basically a very dark brown, but you can see what if you can show the uh, the, the whites. Yes. And see how what how what a difference it makes. Yes, right here, and so I can put right 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 here yeah. the same, and so this is the hundred percent. So what what I did here. So this is the hundred percent, and that's how it's uh, going. And that was a truly discovery for me because uh, usually when we work on the colors, we work on full strengths, and then we have fifty fifty with um, uh, with titanium usually for the swatches to show you the color itself. And so I I really didn't do this to uh, this gradation for specifically this color because I was like, okay, this is black. We have what we have uh, six blacks. That's uh, one of them. And uh, uh, I, I always talk about uh, Roman black, how it's interesting color and not many uh, artists uh, pay attention to that one. But now Castle Earth is <laughs> very, very uh, interesting for me. So I, I would probably will uh, work more on that one. So, yes. In the glazes, uh, what is the ratio of oleo gel on, 
in what we showed. Only. Yeah, Constance, like I said, you know, uh, it was a little bit dif difficult to, to work with that because like with white, you would understand and, uh, you know, you would add like 20 to 80. So I basically did somewhere like 10% uh, every time. So I would add another 10% and another 10%. But at some point, somewhere here, I realized that I can just, you know, do uh, so many and it will, it's already not fitting here. So then... Uh, somewhere here it's a uh, it's a lot of folio gel and I can tell you this I uh, painted this uh, two uh, two weeks ago and it's uh, on this last um, not all it's I guess it's depend on the pigment yeah. so like in, uh, in uh, uh, blue rich yellow ochre still sticky and uh, remember blue rich yellow ochre has smaller particles so therefore it's uh, you know here's in this case obviously a little bit more oil than uh, than another and so that's uh, uh, a little bit more sticky than others so like where the castle earth almost dried but again we show in this but please don't use that much <laughs> medium <laughs> unless of course it's uh, complete glazing and of course we were applied talking, very thinly yes you know, and we were talking even then, about yes you know, yes Next question, is Venetian red cooler than your French red ochre? The, um, yes, uh, Venetian red is the coolest one from all, but next after one, of course, will stay uh, French, uh, French red ochre. If you're familiar with French red ochre, yes, Venetian will be uh, slightly. And again, I see right now on my screen, it's different than I see on my uh, table. And... Uh, uh, I, of course, I don't talk about Indian red. If we are talking about like the coolest of our reds, Indian red and hematites are uh, hematites are the, the the coolest ones. So, yeah. Okay. Next question: uh -huh. Is there an important difference between turpentine and OMS when adding to mediums? Good question. So, uh, if we are just talking about physical properties, uh, then yes, turpentine dries much faster than uh, OMS. So that's if because are, it evaporates, evaporates faster. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, any mediums you will take with uh, turpentine will dry uh, will dry faster. On the other hand, of course, if we are talking about health issues. Uh, so then OMS probably will be slightly better to your breathing. But should capacity. always but use all of them absolutely. with adequate protection and yes. ventilation. Oh, obviously, yes. yeah. So please pay attention. Uh, we write all information on the tube. And if you're still not, um, um, you know, questioning, please give us a call. And we're always uh, happy to help you on the phone. What's the main difference between adding oleo gel and just linseed oil to paint? Handling. Yes. yes. Alberto, you're correct. You are correct. So then uh, this probably the only difference between linseed oil and oleo gel. Because oleo gel uh, obviously is the gel and that's uh, much easier to handle and uh, easier to not overdo where the with liquid substance um, uh, obviously it will be more fluidly so you get more yeah. flowing yes. so the gel it's less flowing yes and because uh, all, all of these gel mediums by the way have uh, a small amount of silica in it very tiny amount it actually gives it a little bit more drag uh, to the um, to the brush so that's an advantage there and uh, he's all, Alberto Oscar ask is epoxide oil by itself not the gel effective for glazing or as a medium yeah absolutely sure. again we made it to the gel because the behavior and uh, and it's easy to to keep in the tube instead of the you know having the bottle and so but again it's pluses and minuses and so absolutely oil uh, the epoxide oil gel uh, oil is as good as uh, gel good question from zumi in order to get light colored glaze like on your swatch don't you need to add a lot of medium you're warning against adding too much 
Again, uh, Zumi, think it's like this. We are doing all this test just to show you because we do have daily questions when uh, artists call us and we spend hours on the phone and uh, we trying to tell, please don't use a lot, but one thing it's to say and another thing to show. And specifically for us to follow like the, you know, steps what you are doing and it's easy for us to say what's good what not so then you will not make this mistake so that's why yes you do need to add a lot of mediums and so and especially like when when we talk about like last uh you know our it's oh that's funny look at that's how how it's look like but anyway so it's okay so don't don't change it so I love um to, love to Yes. <laughs> Zebra pattern on there. Um, <laughs> yes. And we doing this for purpose. We, uh, again, if you will come to our lab and you will see, we are doing the craziest tests in order to, uh, to explain artists what do not do. But Zumi, one thing to keep in mind too, is that applying paint thinly is actually the key to get very light glazes. And in addition to that, um, the other thing is we showed in, I guess it was two previous AMA, uh, we showed you how to use paste mediums, yeah. in which case you can add paste mediums to a much bigger degree than you can gel mediums because paste mediums contain less oil. So that's the key thing to understand there. And I feel like, you know, again, this uh, series of this uh, AMA program was, uh, was specifically, we thought like, okay, we will designate three programs for sp specifically just for the mediums. And looks like more we are doing, more questions come up. And so, uh, like, for example, I, I did the, the swatches and I, uh, I can't find right now uh, very fast for this program, but looks like we will do another one where uh, I did the, just the brush strokes for the, you know, like, uh, very, what is it? Scumbling, scumbling, scumbling. Mm -hmm. scumbling. So for, uh, every color and then the same color with medium. And so then you can see that. And, um, uh, we were doing this specific, just for the, uh, the specific test, just for the future article, but it's, um, uh, it's good to see and why mm -hmm. we're doing this because then at least you will save your time. You will not do this test at home, then you know how it's behave. Again, I, we choose these colors, and of course you can, uh, you can use all other colors, and that means it will open the, you know, the jar of worms for uh, something else, and so, yeah. C can of worms. Can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I read big particle paints are more likely to sink in. Is this accurate? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't know. Uh, again. It's not based on, it's not based on the particle size. It's based on the absorbency of the underlying surface. And the pigment itself. Yeah. Some pigments, uh, you will take like our red ochres and they have big particles and they almost never will sink in because unless you like you have the porous uh, ground. But if you will take some umbers, yes, they, they could see any, some of them. Uh, again, that's why in our line of colors, George is uh, mixing uh, almost all our umbers uh, have budded oil inside. So it's kind of like mixture of uh, linseed oils, different ones. And so, and uh, just to prevent that. But again, every each of you paint different, uh, apply different uh, paint to to different surfaces and it's very difficult to say and some if somebody made that conclusion That's wrong. That's it's actually it's not based on the correct information because again if in fact We have a whole lesson on this in the painting best practices dot com website. It talks about uh, uneven gloss and why that's such a big problem caused by sinking in and we talk about the causes and how to mitigate it. Yes. And it's really, it's very easy to, to mitigate that in a painting. So uh, go, go to paintingbestpractices.com and, and see what we've uh, uh, posted about that. 
Next question, Castle Earth is Van Dyke Brown, isn't it? No, no, unfortunately, unfortunately. We, we kind of like uh, telling artists now who, who miss our Van Dyke uh, color. So we, uh, we did have Van Dyke and uh, as many cases uh, through the history, you know, you will have some pigments and suddenly they disappear because of whatever reasons it's, you know, political or it's uh, digging the earth and suddenly the veins uh, d disappear. So it's, it's a lot of uh, cases. And so in this case, we lost Van Dyke. And so it's completely different. Uh, in Maston, yeah, it could be uh, because Van Dyke was a very cool one where the uh, we thought then the castle earth is uh, quite neutral but this is like this is uh, this is different one one thing to keep in mind uh, genuine van dyke brown is no longer available in fact it it just disappeared the the one company that was mining it uh in uh, germany yeah. uh stopped production and and the we don't know exactly why they did but one of the one of the big things is why they were and you're right that it tended to darken over time uh, because the genuine Van Dyke brown contained uh, lignous earths, which is an organic substance that tended to degrade. So they stopped mining it because it was it was principally used, not just in artist paints, which was a minor uh, component of it. It was actually used in wood stains because it's a very transparent brown. So it was very good there. And of course, in wood stains, if it darkened a little bit, that wasn't the end of the world. But um, uh, so it's so worldwide, there's no more Van Dyke, Van Dyke brown. I do believe uh, Williamsburg still have they, the old... They may have, uh, if they old, had yes. a, a supply, yeah. but then it's gone because yeah. the one company that did sell it, uh, Laxness, which is a German company, stopped producing it. The Castle Earth is uh, generally, the two terms are synonymous, but the Castle Earth that we get is from an Italian source. And, uh, and, and, and so it's a uh, brown earth that's, as you can see, it's, it's very transparent, has a similar mass tone. And like I said, it is a brown ochre, similar in, in some nature to Van Dyke, but uh, oh, look at, look at look at our little friend there. We have uh, <laughs> we today babysitting our uh, son's dogs, <laughs> so he still behaves well. So he's good. yeah, you're good. Um, so, so Michael okay, just, uh, yes. asks about uh, for long or for plain air and for making I assume long paint, which medium do we recommend for long paint? Long paint. Uh, so uh, we were recommending Wilson's medium only because of the turpentine and it's drying fast, uh, drying very fast. So that was good. For long, I again, um, I mean, I guess you can use oleo rest gel. So that will be uh, again another very long one, dries very fast, and uh, that's what good to, uh, at least you're uh, outside. So if if that is the concern about the, the health, but it's not as long. That's the thing. As long as what? As, long. Uh, it's not as long as uh, epoxide, no. But yeah. that's again, it's like uh, we always say, and then uh, artists sometimes using materials without understanding, like they are using walnut oil, but same time they, they put turpentine. So then it's like you are putting, uh, what's that, one one leg or one foot on the gas and another on the brake. So because one intend to be speed up and another one to uh, to stop you. And so um, I, I don't know all you res I mean, epoxide oil is not for that for sure. Uh, although it is the longest from all of our mediums. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Michelle asks, uh, I tried Wilson's median and found a slight lumpiness. It is supposed to be that way. Yeah. It has a texture. Yeah. That's what it we showed you there. It has a texture and it's, uh, it can, sometimes it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's just having this. It, it coagulates it yes. a little bit. Yeah. Yes. And uh, again, just because it does give that uh, texture. So then art, some artists love, if you don't, so then, uh, you know, this, yeah, this is what it is. Leslie asks, how will these pigments, including lead white, 
withstand the time in an impasto application. You mean uh, you talking about so the earth pigments, pigments, I assume. Uh, so I'm assuming the earth pigments, of course. They again, I we try to explain as uh, as so earth colors are mostly iron oxides, and uh, so like they are definitely it's the just dirt outside of your house and so it's um, thousands millions of years on uh, in, uh, planet earth and it will still stay it's light fastness and of course in pasta medium you just need to pay attention on what specific oil you're using because these days of course uh, if you are using we have already cases if you are using safflower or sunflower uh, puppy oil, so then uh, it could be uh, could be diff diff difficulties on the on the future, and um, because they are not drying properly, so and she's Joshua, talking about the pigments. Uh, I know, but in, in, in pasta application, exactly. Yeah. So it's so, depend what uh, oil you're using. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. but other than that, in pasta could be safe. So you Apple, could... the, the key is thin applications of paint. You can build up layers, but thin applications. But keep in mind, lead white creates the most flexible and strong film in oil paint. The earth pigments are, are among the most stable pigments yes. known to, to, uh, to artists. Yes. Uh, Constance asks, am I correct? 25% medium is recommended for glazes on last layers. You know, that... Again, see, it yeah. depends what pigment you choose. So yeah. 25 for uh, histo for the uh, earth pigment, maybe will be okay. If you are doing 25 to the uh, small particles, uh, uh, synthetic pigments, it's probably too much. It will be too glossy. It will be too uh, uneven. No, don't. It's just like we are saying 10 to 20 percent. That's probably the most. But again, again rules, rules are very yes. difficult to give. Remember, because, in Tanya our class, we yeah. every time saying that we are telling you about rules, but you always can break on, as long as you know the rules. So and you know what to follow. And so if you know the rule, you know what to expect afterwards. Rather than focusing how much, it's much better to understand that adding more oil or medium increases the propensity for yellowing, increases the drying time, and all of that. So if you understand that, use as much as you think you can in your application. As Tanya in mentioned, everything varies. Yes. You know? And in this case, of course, Remember what we started this uh, three uh, programs. Paste mediums are always, or at any circumstance, always much safer to use than the gel mediums or simple in, in oil. larger amounts. Yes. Yeah. yes. If you if you don't remember, go back to uh, uh, what is it? Uh, four weeks ago, so we have that one. We are talking about impasta, impasta medium and Velasquez medium. Any chance we might be getting a Venetian medium Italian varnish alternatives that are solvent free? <laughs> yes, George. Actually, last week, it just he was uh, he, like always. He's busy. So, but last week we uh, we were talking about already. So we will make. I don't know exactly about Venetian medium, but Italian varnish for sure he will make without, we will try to attend because it will, it will behave different. It will look different, but we will definitely uh, try to attempt that the Italian uh, varnish will be the first one. What's the dog's name? <laughs> <laughs> Otis. Oh, now he's yeah. suddenly quiet. He's uh, upset with me. Otis is the name. Yes, Otis. <laughs> well, there he comes. Okay, come here. Do you... Come here. Come here. Show up. Because yeah, you're. Oh, okay. Come, come here. You good? Yeah. Show your face. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have camera shy? Yes. Do you have a chart of mediums that shows whether a medium is solvent free? Thank you very much. Uh, we we will do today, and um, so it's very easy to do. 
uh, thank you. Actually, on that chart, we could do exactly the, the third uh, column and uh, to show you what uh, uh, for now, if, if you are excited for now to buy, because here we, you can, we do you have... can see this. Uh, I'll put this on here. Oh, you be, OK. So the top three are solvent free. The bottom four have solvents. Great. Yes. That's one way to see that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, how, look how convenient we put that. Um, uh, yeah, just seven of them together. And of course, um, our um, impasta medium and Velasquez medium don't have any solvents. The paste so mediums. Paste yeah. mediums yeah. don't have any solvents. So, yes. And let me see. What we have. So while Josh oh, is looking for more. Uh, one more thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you explain how to use the underpainting transparent base? I'm having difficulty using it. Okay, great. So I have right here, so the swatch for the base. And so then uh, from the uh, first program. And so let me uh, take this out. And uh, so transparent base, uh, it's based on Alkit. And that was specifically in the game. I, I always I'm uh, I'm telling in our classes that every medium, almost every medium in our line of colors, are based on your tears and anxiety because you called George and saying then everything what what is right now available on market doesn't work for me, and uh, so and then he uh, you know he will put all his brains and uh, put the um, uh, medium together. That was one of the base uh, base uh, uh, transparent base. So because um, uh, artists are like always your guys on hurry to produce and so but what's slowing you down? It's always the, the first layer because uh, if you don't use the turpentine and uh, your, your first washes and you're doing so, it's, um, it takes too long to dry. And um, he created the uh, transparent base. And so uh, you basically, it's, it's like your impasta, our impasta medium, and, um, but with Alkit. And so it is, you can add to any of your color and, um, and basically make your first uh, passage and, uh, and be done. And in a couple hours, it will be dried. After that, you don't want to use anywhere uh, in your painting in any other layers, except if you are painting a La Prima. So, because that's, that's if you are just painted and be done with that, uh, so the transparent base would be good for that. But just because it does dry very fast and, and again, depend on which color you're using. So if you are uh, editing to, for example, to umbers, it will dry even faster. So in order to, uh, to prolong the time or make a little bit more manageable to paint, you just add any oil or if you have our oleo gel, you can add oleo gel or even better, you can add um, uh, Velasquez medium because what it has, it does have the bodied oil. So then it will mitigate this, um, the sinking in on future because uh, base transparent base is uh, drying very fast and very matte. So where the Velasquez medium will make it a little bit more glossier if you need. And, uh, and like I said, prevent the, uh, um, the sinking in and the most what people do struggle because it's like almost like you can see it's almost like calculating on your uh, palette. It's just drying up and that medium specifically was done for that. And if you by accident buy that, then you will freak out. So. In uh, I I'm sorry I missed the name George who asked the question so Patricia. But what Patricia so Patricia what you do if you don't have any other mediums what I already mentioned just when you uh, when you squeeze the the uh, base mix with any oil like just linseed oil you know whatever you have in your studio so that will make that that medium a little bit more flu uh, fluid. And uh, you can make, like again, I said, with any color. 
And um, I think the key, Patricia, is just to understand that it was designed to be added to oil, to the oil. never alone. No. And actually, uh, it's better if you use more oil paint with it than the medium, yeah. even though it's a paste, uh, because of the fact that it dries so fast. And yes. that's probably, that's the, when people have problem with it, that's because they don't understand that it's setting fast and, and it'll uh, set on the palette within a half yeah. hour by itself. Yeah. And it will dry. So, so mix it immediately into your paint. Don't set it on the palette. Just mix it into your paint immediately, which is always a better practice for any medium is to get it into your paint immediately. Don't sit it on your palette. In fact, when, uh, so uh, the last batch, what we made, so we were doing uh, several years already, uh, the transparent base, and we understand then what what some artists absolutely love about this, uh, this um, uh, medium. Uh, most uh, most artists are struggle. So what we did, we uh, actually loosen up a little bit on last batch. It works very well. And uh, so, but when we created, it was funny story about this because we understood then when you give the name to the uh, medium and if people don't, like we were thinking like quick uh, uh, dry or fast dry and we understood an artist will use from all over the uh, on all over the map and so we absolutely wanted to prevent that that's why we we called specifically underpainting transparent base so then you kind of like understand that this is only on first layer here's from uh, alexandria oh my girl <laughs> hi my girl so Happy so to see she, you. she's working on a Velasquez copy and which mediums do we advocate for glazing and general use there? I, I think, mean, obviously, I think just simply oleo gel Velasquez yeah. and oleo gel yeah. will be <laughs> the yeah. two ones. So Velasquez for the, uh, you remember Velasquez has a, <clears throat> uh, uh, the body oil, so it will be longer. And uh, oleo gel, obviously, for transparency, like if, if you want to achieve very fast, and but very thin, uh, thin layers. Do we have a UK retailer? We do. We do. And it's uh, Supreme Paint. And so... Uh, and they're based in Devon, but they... They're, Jane, yeah. they're, um, they're, they're sending all over the UK. Uh, and so they're e doing email. actually quite mm -hmm. well. So they're sending by mail, yes. So mm -hmm. then... Uh, check Supreme Paint, and uh, so the owner of uh, James, so uh, great guy. He's um, you know he's helping us a lot. Last probably like five years. And also we do have a website naturalpigments.eu. Naturalpigments.eu. So where you can uh, we can send uh, if uh, if uh, something uh, James doesn't have in his store, so we can send now from uh, our U store. It's in Germany. And so you unfortunately will need to pay the uh, probably a little bit uh, more shipping, but not like shipping from us and no custom from us. So that's good. Good. Part. No custom from yes. in the UK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, this I'm not sure how to pronounce. Malray uh, is asking about the update on organic pigment light fast testing. And we are working. Uh, so then uh, Arizona test will start from October. We hope. We're still waiting for a third participant. Uh, golden Artist Colors, Natural Pigments, and it may be, uh, actually, it, it may be... Um, we think we found... One more, one more company. We think we found I don't, I don't know company. if they're going to participate or not, but if they do, then we will at least go forward with the ASTM uh, development of the test. So hopefully that does. Uh, all other companies just refuse to work uh, on that issue. And guys, uh, two of us, Golden and us, it will not be enough testing. So we are ready. And um, I, I'm pretty sure uh, Golden is ready to do <clears throat> too. So, but this test starts always, every, every year it starts only in October and it's going until April. So therefore, like last year, the first year we missed because of the corona, of course. The last year we missed because everybody refused to, uh, to work on that. 
uh, we are doing our tests, our own test. And so that's, um, uh, and unfortunately it, it will, it, it's taking time, but it's ready. And uh, George already put the glass out. So this we're, year we're we in, sure we are doing for ourselves. We're doing Forget about our own, else. yeah, we're doing our own test uh, in our, our premise. It's an outdoor test yeah. uh, and it's very similar to the one in Arizona, but it's, uh, but to do that one, we still need more participants. Yes. Uh, Blake asks, uh, I, it used to be that I would mix medium in white paint I was using on the premise that it would get into most areas of the paint. Do people still do this? I, I, she's talking about, I believe, uh, mixing the medium into your paint on your palette. That's what people should be doing, not what we call brush dippers, where they're dipping their brush in them, because there's no way you can control how much medium you're putting in. So add it to your paint on your palette. That's really the best way. Okay. Okay. We have, we're going to, we're going over time, but we can take oh, a few more. Okay. Um, I thought today will be the shortest one. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> can you talk about the difference between Velasquez medium and barite? Yes, absolutely. So uh, barite is uh, as much as extender pigment as, uh, as a chalk. And so, and uh, just originally where we uh, we were doing line of the uh, white colors, and so just because we did have only the uh, the lead whites and we didn't have any other uh, whites, so then bright was at least something what was in that line. Uh, I mean, if to be completely like open, it must be one of the mediums. But uh, barite historically was the color because it was if you are using barite with uh, water-based uh, uh, medium, so uh, it's it's quite white. But in oil, it's uh, same transparent as a, as a chalk. So the difference, of course, in Valno, uh, I mean in um, Velasquez medium, we use uh, bodied Whoa. oil. And uh, in bright, we are using walnut oil. So that uh, that makes bright a little bit slightly shorter. And uh, whereas the Velasquez, it's opposite. It's like long and stringy. So that's the main. It's essentially a paste medium. Yeah. You know, of barite. Yeah. Any updates on the new cinnabar red color pigment? Okay. Okay. Spo spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> it's ready. And um, we will announce it's ready. And it's uh, even um, grinded. And uh, so it's already two years, believe it or not. We, we, I, I can't say we struggle with this color, colors. It's five colors and it will be special presentation. And uh, it's very limited edition. And um, so it will be special packaging. And um, I hope it will be done by July 4th. So should be earlier, actually. <laughs> I know you excited about early, but yes, it will be. So I just to letting you know, so it would be Lazurite, Azurite, Malachite, Cinnabar. Orpiment. And Orpiment. All historical we minerals, finally we yeah. will bring orpin back orpiment we didn't have 10 years cinnabar we never had but just because we lost uh, the um, um vermilion Ver vermilion yeah. we lost vermilion so we uh, hope to get we, it back though yeah. we are and uh we ha we found um, um great source of azurite it's not the azurite. Uh, so that is dark had, blue. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, we had from Russia uh, azurite, so we don't have that source anymore, and so now uh, it will be slight dull one. But it's uh, when you look historical paintings, it's actually the azurite what was uh, used, and so and of course malachite. So it's one of the historical beautiful colors, and so yeah, it's coming. And Michelle has been asking us about uh, Wollenstonite medium. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, we should kill George altogether. He promised us a year ago. And so, <laughs> and uh, it's uh, actually summer looks quite easy this summer. So we are, uh, we are good uh, in, um, in production. And so probably uh, should go back and, and, you know, definitely do that one. And uh, so 
And, and uh, Melissa asks, uh, how can that be ordered? Will I, I imagine she's talking about the Cinnabar. Yeah, and Melissa, the, we'll, we will. We'll, yeah, we will have special announcement. Believe me, you will not miss it uh, because of the because of the way how we will sell that, and it's uh, literally will be numbered every. Um, again, I will not say that uh, every package will be numbered. So it uh, it it will be special special announcement for us and so you will not miss it we will uh, send the emails and we will uh, probably have ama before we introduce to the public so then at least on ama you will see first and then decide for yourself uh, which one or every uh, each of them you need so then yeah make sure and subscribe that way you'll get the yes. notification yes yeah. that's true that's it I guess that's it. So then, uh, next and remind uh, about the me the uh, offer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I I already did, but anyway. So yeah. I will do. So the next uh, AMA, we are hoping to talk about lead. I mean, about whites. Again, we are returning back because this time we did test with ultramarine, and uh, we had all our lights. Uh, whites and uh, to see uh, the light uh, how the, the the glass the the color the whiteness and so we we have all this test done finally it's dried out all of them and so we hopefully will talk about this next day may and uh, we will um, next after that we are uh, planning about varnishes all our different varnishes how they look like how they behave uh, like and so and um, please don't forget until May 31st, we do have special offer. So you can buy any three tubes of any mediums and you will have uh, automatically will have on your card a uh, 20% off. So we, as always, happy to be here and um, please stay with us and, uh, and uh, hear the latest news. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. And uh, see you next time. Bye, Bye. now.